Hi guys, uh, Dory and I are here to talk to you about bee stings, dogs and bee stings. As you know, Dorito, Dory Doris Dorito Pacatato over here got stung by a bee a few days ago and she almost died. Um, Dory's reaction was really severe. She went into anaphylactic shock and that's why it became life-threatening. So I want to talk to you about uh, the different kinds of bee stings and how to be prepared and she's more interested in uncle rob who is filming this than uh hanging out with me and being my my co-star hi okay go go say hi go say hi all right so um the most common ways for dogs to get stung by a bee are they will either step on one there'll be one on the ground or there'll be one on the flower and they go to sniff that flower sniff something so usually the bee stings you'll see will be on the face, especially pug lips, um, or on their foot. That's what happened with Dory. The bee was flying low and then it dropped and as luck would have it, Dory stepped right on it. Um, another way is if they pee or squat, you know, to pee pee, if there's clovers on the ground or something like that, that's another way they can get stung. So always be vigilant, face and feet. If you see bees, Stay away from them. Get your dog um, away from them as far as you can because you don't know what kind of reaction they're going to have. So having said that, those are the two the, the two most common ways and places where they get stung. Um, there are two kind of reactions they can have. They can have a simple allergic reaction. So they'll have like localized swelling, the lips, and I'm sure some of you have seen the photos. The, their lip will swell up. Their foot will swell up. Uh, those are kind of local allergic reactions to the bee sting. Um, the first thing you want to do if you see them stung is remove the stinger. That is the first thing you want to do. You want to cut off the flow of the toxin into their body. So with Dory, for example, I turned around and I saw her lift her foot and then walk away with her foot and just get really anxious. Immediately grabbed her, immediately looked for a stinger. It wasn't there. It's not always. Sometimes it is. I've pulled a few out. Um, and then I just watched her carefully for a second. I picked her up and I immediately took her home to give her what I call the bee kit. This is what I always have at home. The first thing is Benadryl, your local common Benadryl you can get at every drugstore. Um, I like to get these packets. This, I get this on Amazon, this box, because they come in two tablet packets. So you can have one in the car, have, because if you go to a dog park, you talk, it, it can happen anywhere. You can have one in different places so that you're always prepared. When people adopt a dog from me, I put one of these in their adoption package because I want to make sure they always have this on hand. For puppies, you can also have liquid Benadryl. You can have liquid Benadryl for grown dogs too. You can inject it into their mouth with a syringe. Just you have to make sure it's sugar free. It's super important. Um, and talk to your vet about dosing based on your dog's body weight. Or you can just get pills, you know, generic kind at Costco or Walmart or wherever. But make sure you have Benadryl at home always if you have a dog. Um, with Benadryl, actually, the dosing is really simple. It's one milligram, one mg per one pound of body weight. So a Dory, even though I know people think she's so chunky, she's not. Guys, look at this. This is just all her fur and skin. Inside, there's just a small little girl hiding, right, Dory? So let's say Dory is 13 pounds. A standard uh, Benadryl pill is 25. So <laughs> I would break this in half, super easy to break. Break it in half. I grabbed her, I opened her mouth, I popped it in the back of her throat, I closed her mouth, I rubbed her nose, make her swallow. So she immediately got that within one minute of the bee sting. The other thing I have on hand always, and I would recommend you get this from your vet, is prednisone. Prednisone is a steroid. They're cheap, they're little. Prednisone will take away the swelling. So while Benadryl antihistamine goes to work um, against the allergic reaction of the sting, prednisone will take away the swelling. If they get stung in the, in the face, the mouth, there's always a risk that their tongue could swell up, that they could have trouble breathing, especially if folks have enough trouble breathing as is, like in Dory's case. Um, so I like to have both. I give both. I give a little five milligram or two and a half milligram prednisone. I have both on hand and I give them um, the Benadryl. Like if your dog is 20 pounds or 21 pounds, just give the whole pill. It is perfectly safe to give a little more. Benadryl is a safe medication, but basically one pound, 1 mg so that's what i call the bucket and i recommend that everybody has this at home in case your dog gets stung or has some kind of an allergic reaction breaks out in hives 
Benadryl and prednisone. Get it from the store. Get it from your vet. You don't have to have too many. It's for emergencies. So the first reaction can be an allergic reaction. Localized swollen lips, swollen foot. Her foot did swell up. And so after I gave her both the prednisone and the Benadryl, I watched her. Her breathing got a little more um, fast and loud, which she normally is, but it was even louder than this. And then she threw up. And that's how I knew she was going into anaphylactic shock. When dogs are severely allergic to an allergen, they go and they can go into anaphylactic shock. It's basically like their body is overreacting to the toxin. So instead of just localized swelling and maybe a couple hives, not feeling great, their body is fighting this invader and it's a systemic life-threatening reaction. The way you know with dogs, usually the first, it's the, it attacks their gastrointestinal system. So they will either have diarrhea or they will throw up. The minute, the second Dory threw up, I picked her up, I opened her mouth, her tongue was blue. I ran out of the house without my wallet, without my phone. I got in my car and I drove as fast as I could to the ER. In the car, she was already getting limp and I did some CPR, uh, made sure her airway was clear that she could breathe, opened the window, got air, and I mean, I, I jammed there. The best thing you can do in that case is get your dog to the ER, to the vet, as soon as possible. Please know where your closest 24-hour emergency vet is, because this can happen at any time. If your vet is closed at 5 or 6, if this happens on a summer night at 8 o'clock, you need to know. Please know where your closest 24-hour emergency vet is, where your closest vet offices are. If yours is closed, is there somebody else? Know their hours. Be prepared to take them. Um, when a dog has a severe allergic reaction like Dory anaphylaxis, Benadryl and prednisone don't do anything because it's attacking their gastrointestinal system, liver values skyrocket, um, they throw up, they, they instantly release their bowels, and then all the blood in their body sort of pools in that area, so the blood pressure drops dangerously low. They could not get Dory's blood pressure up for a long time. That's what threatened her life. It was abnormally super, super low. She barely had any blood pressure going. And so she needed epinephrine, which is anti the uh, anaphylaxis, this uh, anti-severe allergy uh, reaction shot. And then she needed double dosage of IV fluids to get it up. So even with this, for an allergic reaction, in Dory's case, even if she didn't throw this up, which I know the, the minute she threw up, I was like, okay, this is obviously not in her system. Um, because the pills hadn't even had a chance to dissolve, um, but it would not have saved her life. It was just her, her reaction was so systemic and so severe, it just, just didn't matter. So uh, hospital is the best choice, IV fluids, overnight stay, observation. A reaction can start as a localized swelling and then progress to what happened to Dory. I mean, she was fine for about five minutes, you know, the, the, the ball was swollen, she was uncomfortable, and then it progressed to, to the vomiting. Now, if your dog is, you know that your dog is severely allergic, like I know Dory now is severely allergic to bee stings. How do you prepare for that? You know, what if I'm lucky to be very close to an ER hospital, but what if I'm further? For years, my vets told me that EpiPens for dogs don't exist. And that is true. There are no epi epinephrine pens for dogs. Like there are for humans who are like have severe um, peanut allergy or shellfish allergy and, and, and an EpiPen will save their life. It doesn't exist for dogs. So, but I know a lot of pug people have a human EpiPen. So for example, this is a generic kind of a human EpiPen. It's 0 0.15 milligrams. This is for a child. The weight range for this is about 33 pounds to 60 pounds. Dory's like 12, 13 pounds. This is too much. Even on the lower end, 33, it's still 20 pounds more than she is. So for the longest time, this was the lowest dosage you could buy. And that's clearly just too much. I mean, you can take a chance, but too much epinephrine will kill a dog. So this could potentially be more har harmful to Dory than helpful. Um, so I did some research and discovered there is a company, it's a new product. The company is called AUVIQ, A-U-V-I-Q. They make an EpiPen in a 0.1, 0.1 MG 
epinephrine, not 0.15, this is 15.1. And it's for infants and toddlers. And the weight range is 16 pounds to 33. And it's one milligram of epinephrine, which is exactly the dosage Dory got in the ER. She was injected with one milligram of epinephrine. So I was thrilled when I discovered this because no one had told me about this. I did some, some, some research. Dory likes to eat hair and nibble on toes. And um, I tried to get this. It took me hours to find a pharmacy that carries it. I found a Walgreens an hour away that had it. I sent Bart to pick it up because I was dealing with Frankie in the hospital. And Bart got there and he came home with this. And I was like, this is not the one I wanted. This is the big one. This is the 15. I need the point one. That's specifically what it took me two days to find this. So the far, I called the pharmacy and said, why, why would you give me this? This was by the way, $372. It's, it's expensive, but it is what it is. If it's going to save her life, it's worth it. The pharmacy told me that the one I wanted from LVQ, the 0.1 MG, was $5,881. $5,881. They don't take dog insurance. Dog insurance doesn't cover this. So she said, well, maybe if you can get your medical provider and your insurance will cover this, you can get it at a discounted price if your insurance covers it. It may not. How am I going to get my medical insurance to cover an EpiPen for an infant? Why would I need one? I doubt they would agree. So I have not figured out how to get this. Um, I don't think, I don't know that I feel comfortable injecting someone like Dory size with this. This may be too much and I don't want to cause more damage. Um, if you have a bigger dog, by all means, 33 pounds to 60. I mean, you know, talk to your vet, talk to your veterinarians and your experts about using something like this on a pug. I, I, maybe if I was far away from a hospital and I had no other choice and a dog was dying, I would use it, but I would be worried. I wish we could get the 0.1 MG. I think, you know, if your pug is your dog, that small is truly allergic and will go into anaphylactic shock then but i just don't know this price is insane i don't know how to get it down once i figure that out i will let you guys know so that pug people don't have to have this high dosage epipen but they can get a more appropriate pug size dose of 0.1 not 0.15 and just so you know these reactions get worse with time so once a dog is stung by a bee they become sensitized to the bite the next reaction will be worse. It could be a severe allergic reaction, it could be mild anaphylaxis, and then a subsequent one could be the full systemic, what happened to Dory. Throw up, you know, they lose their bowels, they can't breathe, their tongue turns blue, and then the blood pressure drops to the point of being life-threatening. So please be careful, stay away from bees. I love bees, I, they're amazing and necessary, but they don't do well with pugs. And you know what, I feel, I saw that bee flying low and I didn't want to shoosh it away. I didn't know if it would just get more kind of aggressive. I had no idea that it would drop to the ground. So now I check the yard. I make sure there's no bees on the ground. Uh, if there are, there are bushes or trees that are really attracting bees, I try to stay away from them. Or have the gardeners cut the flowers off, which is what I did with a couple um, Indian hawthorn bushes we have here. So just be very, very careful. It's not worth it because ultimately you don't know if your dog is going to just have an allergic reaction, a mild localized swelling, or if it's going to threaten its life. So bees and pugs don't mix. Um, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, please pick up some Benadryl, get some prednisone from your doctor. The EpiPen situation, I have to research. I will get back to you guys. Be safe. Love you. I'm going to go and let Dory finish doing my hair. <laughs> Bye, guys. You 